Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, OSGO AGM 2021 uh, Q&A, basically. So we have uh, several uh, members of the board of directors here with us, and uh, we are going to uh, start with a short introduction. And then uh, we'll give you some time to start uh, asking questions on the chat and on the on the questions tab, and uh, we'll we'll move on with uh, with the, with the questions after this uh, short introduction. So let me share my screen if possible. Yes. All right. So I hope you can all see that. So welcome again to the annual general meeting. Um, we have we have uh, provided a presentation on on YouTube this year. Uh, so I hope I hope some of you would, were were able to, to 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 view the video before the the actual meeting today. Uh, we are going to have a short introduction. So uh, we are OSGO. OSGO is a non for profit software foundation. And we provide projects with financial, organizational, and legal support. We are promoting uh, global adoption of open source geospatial technology. And we are uh, working with partners uh, all around the world to, to, to promote an open approach to standards, data, and education. Um, as we all know, we are a volunteer-driven organization with passionate members uh, all around the world. Uh, we are always working with partners. We are not alone, and we are working with our partners for uh, open source promotion, for uh, a collaborative approach to open source to software development. Uh, we promote open data, freely available for information to, to use as you wish, open standards uh, to avoid locking uh, with interoperable software open education for removing removing the barriers to learning and teaching and open science to share data and software for responsible research uh, we have covered some of these in the in the youtube video uh, we have uh, lots of members we are growing every year so we have right now 487 elected charter members uh, 33 new members from last year uh, we have uh, more than one and a half thousand members on the website and more than 36,000 members on the mailing lists. Uh, we have our projects here and our projects uh, were kind enough to send us a report this year. At least uh, I counted 20 out of 21 projects this year sending a, a, a project uh, report and thank you for doing that. So we have 21 uh, graduated projects, and we have the first heritage project this year, which is the MOSS project. We are growing also the community, and uh, more community projects are joining us. Uh, this year, we, we welcome four new community projects, and we hope to see more uh, joining us in, in, the next, uh, in the next year. Uh, we didn't have a new local chapter this year, so we are we are in the COVID era, but we hope to have new local chapters or grow our local chapters um, next year. We are um, working again with our sponsors. We have an active sponsor program. We recognize the financial, the financial support across activities, projects, and events. Um, we have a very clear table of benefits for our uh, sponsors. So please, if you are, if, if you can, sponsor one of our events, sponsor OSGO directly, or sponsor a project. Um, we try to keep uh, to keep up with the sponsorship. So if you are sponsoring a, an event, you can take advantage of, uh, advantage of this sponsorship to actually be named as an OSGO sponsor. All you have to do is send us an email with what you have sponsored each year and we will upgrade you to an OSGEO sponsor to the, to the specific category. Uh, this is an updated list of our sponsors, uh, which is different from what we had in the YouTube video be because luckily we have more sponsors coming in as we are every day this list changes. Thank you uh, for your sponsorship and for supporting OSGEO um, uh, for, for this year as well. 
Uh, we have new uh, partners as as every as every year. So we have signed um, new MOUs, memorandum of understandings, and this is a full list of our current sponsors. And we just signed a new a new MOU with uh, Humanitarian Open Street Map in August, um, and we are discussing more uh, with OGC about a new uh, memorandum of, uh, of understanding as long as. Uh, with the International Association of the Study of the Commons. So if you have to propose new partners, please step up and, and let us know. Uh, this is the list of the board of directors. Um, and, and we are uh, every year uh, a, a group of passionate people, and we are trying to help OSGO grow. But we are also uh, we also need the help of you, of everybody, to join us, join a, com a committee, and, and, and give us feedback. Uh, so we need more volunteers, um, and we need more help. All right, that's, that's about it, the, about the introduction. So uh, do we have any questions from... Tom is joining. Sorry, Tom, I was giving the introduction, so I couldn't add you to the stream. <laughs> Welcome. So, are, do we have any any questions from from the wiki? Uh, sorry, not the wiki, from the chat, or any anybody who wants to to make a comment. If we don't have any questions, we will probably have to discuss. So. We will make it into an open mic session, I guess. <laughs> I don't see any questions yet. All right, so maybe it's time to just move <laughs> forward with some more reporting from the OSGO board. So um, anything that the board would like to to say or report? I think we, we were, according to our bylaws, we have to make a, a, an OSGO report. And um, we could just move forward with some more slides if you want. <laughs> Vicky, do you want to, to, to pick up this slide? Sure. So let's talk about the OSGO Board of Directors. Oh, we do have some questions in the question tab oh. now. Let's go to the questions. Excellent. So I'm going to bring in some questions right now. All right, is there an aspect of in the GIS geo world that you feel is missing in the current zoo of OS geo projects? So, anybody who, who would like to answer this one? I think. Mm, yes, yes, go ahead, please. I think um, we haven't tackled the use the using artificial intelligence on GIS systems. That would be a very interesting topic to follow for the next years. All right, so and anything else that we feel that uh, OSGO is, is is missing uh, in, in the projects. So just keep in mind that we are, maybe this question refers to just OSGO projects, but I guess it also includes the community projects because we see some smaller projects joining the community program, but, but, but those tend to be also innovative in, in terms of, you know, there are new projects, they're covering more, more stuff and more technology, more recent maybe technology. So, um, 
I don't know, maybe we are missing something. Um, uh, maybe the vector tile area is, uh, we don't have enough projects there. Um, from what I can think from OSGO Live, I mean, I think we are missing some projects from vector tiles, maybe joining the, the OSGO community or, or incubation program. But we do see lots of projects now that are supporting OGC APIs, for example. So, um, but yeah, there's there's always a balance in the in the OSGO projects, and it it's up to volunteers to step up and 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 um, apply to become an OSGO community project or join the incubation. I think maybe there's also an opportunity to. Um, use some of our OSDO projects to fill in some of the gaps around maybe foundational services <laughs> that some of those projects can provide. Um, a lot of a lot of activities that are using the projects are, are typically looking for tile servers, for example. So could we envision having a tile server? Um, could we envision having uh, you know a, a, a data infrastructure, a very you know a very light one or small one for people to go to with regards to grabbing shared data sets in very specific ways using the projects. Um, those could be other considerations as well. All right. Um, if we don't have any more comments on this one, maybe we can move to another question. This one received the most votes so far. So, all right, next. Um, Maybe I will change that. All right. Could you comment on the GDAL funding and how relations between NumFocus and OSGO work in that case? All right. Who would like to answer this? I, I guess I can take that one. Um, NumFocus is specifically set up as a 501c3 in the US, so they can take uh, tax deductible donations. Um, and provide them as funding uh, to various projects. Uh, GDAL is the current one that's been incubated through that and is actually already receiving distributions. Um, OSGO is aware of it. We were involved in some of the processes, but it's kind of done independently of OSGO. OSGO is a, a 501c4 or c6, and we can't get tax deductible donations. Um, it was kind of done that way um, when we were converted into a, an actual non-for-profit uh, organization just so um, software companies couldn't dump money on OSGO and fund projects and get around uh, employment taxing in the U.S. Just one of those things that uh, that was an issue going on at the time that OSGO was converted into a non-profit and we got our uh, specific thing from the IRS. So we're not a 501c3. We can't get tax deductible donations. Uh, but going through NumFocus, uh, companies can deduct money and uh, donate it to, uh, to projects. But there has to be a, a layer of independence there. And that's what's happened with NumFocus. And they've gotten a number of pledges. And it's actually currently funding the, the GDAL uh, project quite well. And they've gotten some long-term multi-year uh, pledges for GDAL. And it's certainly something that other projects can, um, can go out and do, but it's not something that OSGO is allowed to coordinate, uh, mainly because of the, the tax situation. Does that cover everything, or is there anything anybody else wanted to add on that? Um, I think uh, we we covered this this question, and if there's some something else that needs to be asked, I guess we will uh, see that as a as a follow up question. Okay, but there's no conflict there, so we've right. been involved in the whole process, and it's been very open, and it's, there's a, a specific committee for handling. Um, uh, funding through GDAL and the project steering committee. So it's all done in the open. Yeah, we were included from from day one and we joined the meetings and we signed, we co-signed some documents. So, so yeah, it 
was an open process for OSGO. Um, and it, it's it's similar to the process that QGIS has done with their own foundation. So um, QGIS gets donations from companies that don't go through through OSGO as well. So this is a process that's open to other open source projects, even the ones that are OSGO project. I will read a comment from Jody Garnett. Uh, he mentions that he really doesn't want to have a setup per project thing. That is why he the projects are joining OSGO. What can we say about that? Well, I mean, there is funding that OSGO provides to, to our OSGO projects that uh, you know, comes from funding from sponsors, but it's it's certainly not the level that that NumFocus is getting. And you know, NumFocus also has dedicated employees that are actually salaried and paid for all this. So there's a lot of extra work that NumFocus does. They take, you know, they take a certain portion of the funding that they're getting in order to operate uh, and get that money to projects. So it's just it operates at a scale that it, uh, OSGO can't. Um, with a with a volunteer organization, and it's not that you know one pro one process or the other is wrong. They're they're just different ways of doing similar types of work, and that's kind of how we all work. You know, all, all these projects are a lot of times accomplish similar things, but they do it in very different ways. And I see that as you know kind of the diversity of open source and the diversity in funding too. I'm sorry. I'm I'm wondering if uh, somebody from the chat wants to jump into the the discussion and and make a comment. I mean, there's we could uh, include more people in this in this uh, in this platform um, because I see that there are many answers on the chat. Maybe um, we could just give the link for for people to if they want to say something to jump in. Not sure yeah, how. So we'll maybe go. Evan or Howard Butler yeah. would like to join. We can ask so them. I'm going to, to. Yeah, I'm going to send maybe the, the the stream link there, and please, people, uh, <laughs> use it wisely. <laughs> so if somebody wants to join, I can I can add him on the on, on the on the video, and we can we can hear more. Uh, from you, it's like giving the microphone to everybody. <laughs> so, so feel free to join uh, in, and 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 I can bring you to the stream if you want to answer something or make another. Uh, a couple of good comments from the chat is that OSGO is also a member of Open Collective, so um, companies can fund projects through Open Collective, um, and we're also. Uh, participating in GitHub sponsors. So there's been uh, money coming in through GitHub sponsors that's gone out to projects. So these are all multiple ways of, of funding projects and getting donations. Um, I know Grass is participating in Open Collective rather heavily. Uh, some others have done GitHub sponsors. So there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. And we have Howard with us. Howard, hello. Hello. So I can give a little bit of background on NumFocus and why the GDAL project uh, went that direction. Uh, so besides the tax deductible status, which uh, for the, the partners that we were chasing for the fundraising has a big impact, right? So the original goal was to achieve $250,000 a year times three years of support funding for GDAL maintenance and development activity. And, you know, we had a prospectus that just defined the rationale for why we felt we needed this much money. And the, the organizations that we were uh, working to obtain this, this resources from, they, they already had existing relationships with NumFocus many times, right? So we weren't pushing upstream against uh, trying to convince Amazon or Microsoft or um, Esri, who have all supported uh, Phosphor G in many ways and uh, over the years, but not necessarily OSGO, um, to, to try to convince them to um, send a big invoice to 
to to OSGO or God forbid, create our own foundation for GDAL, which is again going to be a lot more overhead. So that was one factor. The other factor was NumFocus has professional staff um, actively working. I mean, they support uh, like 25 or 30 projects who are doing this similar sort of model. And they had um, capability or uh, procedures in place for something called the grantor grantee model, which is essentially if we show up with funding, uh, they take a fee and are able to service our project. And so um, currently that fee is 15%. So for 15% of the funding that, that GDAL uh, is able to solicit, um, they handle all the invoicing, they handle all of the, um, the legal aspect of orchestrating contracts um, to get contributions from these big organizations. Again, many of whom are already uh, potentially giving to NumFocus because of things like NumPy and SciPy and these other um, projects that are related. So um, there was there was definitely a sort of uh, birds of a feather thing going on with it um, that had us going that direction. GDAL's relationship in regards to OSGO and any other sort of capacity, whether that be governance or kind of its, I guess, social thing, um, no, not really changing it at all. Um, the goal here was to to be able to have a facility uh, to to provide this financial conduit um, that OSGO wasn't really equipped uh, to deal with at the time. I mean, there's no professional staff on OSGO. I mean, we can try to hire people ad hoc, but that's difficult. And so that, that was a driver for a lot of that. Thanks, Howard. Thank you, Howard, for, Thanks. for the input. Uh, in one year to show how it worked out after a year and maybe it's not our mission as always due to yeah provide this um funding support but to help maybe our projects to get in contact with organizations like numfocus to to get funding done because as a volunteer driven organization it looks like the more projects we get we will not be able to to do it or we are not able to do it at the moment so maybe we can only provide this advice how you could do it yeah i think it's important to note that these partners <coughs> that were um, these groups that we're partnering with have have staff dedicated to do these things that OSGO does not have the capacity to do right now with our current volunteer system. So I think it's important to take advantage of these uh, possibilities that are already set up with companies that have staff and the skill set to help you know these uh, projects in ways that they need the help with now that we don't have the time to set up. It would take us a very long time to produce what some of these project partners are already doing and already set up to do. So I think it's a great, a great way to add the functionality that we need to these to these projects that are in in real need of fundraising and and support in that way. I guess right. one quick point I would add, like governance wise and how the, the resources are used and, and so on, that's, you know, NumFocus essentially makes that be or allows that to be the purview of the whatever the organization that uh, is kind of in control of the software project. So um, OSGO already defines what a project steering committee is. It defines um, how those are supposed to work when it goes through incubation. And so we already had, GDAL already had all of that in place and was able to essentially go, hey, we have an organization, it's functioning, um, you know, it controls uh, how the software works and, and you know, it's not, it's not just handing a bunch of money to uh, a random guy uh, somewhere. And, and that's an important part of being able to uh, solicit these kinds of resources, like you, you know, um, and and it was really important when we were going to sponsors and and um, asking them, hey, we're, we want you to trust us with these resources to be able to uh, put this into the project in a, uh, what we uh, called a non-directed way, where the, the sponsors, because of the way the C3 works, um, the sponsors can't essentially earmark their money, and and it becomes uh, a facility of the the GDAL steering committee to decide how those resources should be used. And 
and that requires a lot of trust. And it was really important that the project steering committee of GDAL exist and it have this uh, sort of architecture around it that's defined by OSGEO to provide that. That's why PG Rowling wants to be a OSGEO project. Howard, I have another question to you. Do you think it, it would make sense to build up a closer connection to the NumFocus people or as OSGO, I mean? Um, I, I, maybe. Um, they seem very busy. Uh, when we approach them, uh, you know, I think, you know, we were a related project to, to kind of the Python big data, Python data science sort of realm in that people use GDAL, of course, to get their data, but like we weren't kind of a, a first class member. And so th there was some education that had to go on there. I think the, I think that um, they, they could potentially provide this, this um, staff and capacity thing for um, handling workload that is extremely difficult to, to create or give to volunteers. And, you know, that part of the organization, um, you know, I think it's really important for once you get to things like distributing funds and contracts on, on uh, contributions and all of that sort of stuff. It's just really difficult to do that on a volunteer basis. Um, I don't know that NumFocus has any uh, formal relationships other than MOUs kind of with, with other um, foundation type stuff, but uh, they potentially would be interested in that, so. Thank you, Howard, for the input. Um, unless we have more comments, maybe we should move because we we are getting more and more questions. So maybe we should uh, move with the next question uh, with the most votes. Maybe. Or does anybody else want to say something on that one? I think Howard covered it really well. Thanks, Howard. Thank you, Howard. So next question is, ah, yes, this one. So this, this has the, the, the most votes after the non-focus one. So sorry, I didn't I read that through that also <laughs> is to me. Um, I mean, the, the impact of the canceled conference definitely did have an effect on OSGO finances. Um, but the, so far, this conference has been going very well, and there was a, a large amount of uh, attendance on this so you know we are down a bit on our on our balances but also in this year even though we had a fair amount budgeted uh, a lot of people have not made their budget requests um, to osgo for things that they have been funded for so this is also an announcement to those projects to make sure you get your um, requests for your budgeted amounts into the treasurer so that we can actually get money out to you for your projects and your expenditures. Uh, but it's it's been a little bit of a lean year, but it looks like we're starting to bounce back with uh, this outstanding conference here in Buenos Aires, or actually wherever you are. So our, our balances are down, but uh, we're doing pretty well overall. We're not, uh, we haven't spent down too much on our, on our funds. Anybody think, have anything else to, to cover that they want to cover on this? No, I mean, uh, we have been trying to keep a balance between spending and, and, and what has happened to the world in general. And I think that we, we, we try to review our, our budget for, for the previous year because we had uh, we had approved the budget and then COVID outbreak happened and we had to make sure that we didn't spend everything. <laughs> and and basically travel cost went dramatically went down. Went to zero, so yeah. Went to zero, bro. yeah. So we, we were able to not spend this money and at the same time, uh, yeah, that the costs were went, went down. Um, but still, we I think the projects are not using their, their funding uh, as much as we would like them to. Um, I mean, I this, is, this isn't a request just to use funds, 
please make sure you're using it for good things. But yeah, if you have good efforts, you know, definitely get your, your requests in so, you know, work can get done. And and obviously we are, since there are difficult times for, for OSG and for the whole world in, in terms of financial status, we are obviously taking uh, taking keeping an eye on what is happening uh, within our budget. Uh, so, if, if you have any follow up questions about uh, the budget issue and the finances, please please add them to the <coughs> question. We have any more uh, comments on this one, or shall shall we move to another question? <laughs> so okay let's move on uh the next question with more votes is this one where should one find out more about <coughs> contribution opportunities and, and let me go back to Yeah, Vicky, go ahead. So I'm going to take the this opportunity to mention that I started on OSGO doing translations. And um, this is a contribution opportunity. This year we will have uh, tomorrow our code sprint and we will be working on this basic contribution that allows projects to spread more through the world. Sometimes people say, but everybody understands English and that is not true. Not everybody finishes high school everywhere. Like maybe you can think in India, they go to the university and they, taught, they are taught in English, but whoever doesn't go to the university, they, uh, they don't know English. And that happens all around the world. Not everybody knows English. And this is like the basic contribution for a non-developer, which are basically our users. So that is a key point in a contributing opportunity, I think. And the rest is like that gives you the first insight deep insight because you just don't scan the documentation you just have to go and translate it and read it carefully and build the sentences and understand everything what's going on jumping from documentation to coding becomes easier so it's like kind of the first approach for volunteering in the contribution before going into the code. Of course, you focus on the project of your preference, uh, the one you are more used to, and start contacting the development lists, mailing lists, uh, be aware of the issues, start with trial and error. I tried this, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it works, but we need to go to the standards of the project itself. But translations is like the base, if you know another language, and issues is the other part where you can contribute. I think another yeah. good way, since uh, Vicky mentioned about how um, non-coders can contribute is um, doing things like you know, tutorials and blog posts online, you can do um, quite easily, you know, without um, stepping on anyone else's toes. I think that's a really good way to help um, and get other people involved, especially if it's in, you know, languages that other people need support in. Um, there's obviously, there's a lot written in English, but there could also be, you know, translations of, of those tutorials as well. But um, that's how I started in, in the OSGO community was being an educator. Um, teaching people, you know, what I know and what I've learned. So um, there, there are definitely opportunities beyond coding 
to be a part of this community and contribute. And while I do a little bit of coding now on some of my own smaller projects, I still mostly contribute through educating and giving talks and um, giving workshops and things like that. So that's another way you can also contribute. Um, you know, at, at uh, you know these conferences, you can do talks, you can do workshops, and and that's a huge contribution to the community as well. It's pretty pretty easy to do. Also, uh, yeah, whatever you've done in the stock exchange. Sorry, I probably want to add to what uh, what was mentioned by Michelle. Um, a lot of a lot of the projects also have uh, you know rules guidances for contributions, which you can see on their on their websites, for example. So that that could help. A lot of them also have uh, uh, you know there's a lot of them that have Gitter chats, uh, which where you would find uh, people that are participating in the projects. So you can find out a little bit more. I'd probably stress that you know your contributions do not have to be perfect. Um, everything helps, and uh, in a lot of projects that I've seen, there's definitely uh, um, you know developers and maintainers with open arms looking to uh, uh, help you help those projects. So feel free to uh, get involved. The, the barrier uh, there should be no barrier to participation. Answering everything in Stack Exchange. It's also a great help. I mean, every time I have to go and answer something is time that is taken away from me as a developer from continuing the development. So it's kind of this ecosystem and no, not everything has to be contributing with code directly, but this help around the development it's also a very big contribution. All right, so I found the slide where we are uh, basically saying how people can contribute. Well, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list of how to contribute to OSGO, but in open source in general. And, and thanks, everybody, for the feedback in, in this question. This is a, a broad question, many, th many things that may come to mind. And I think the next question is is very interesting because this is from I guess this is from a newcomer. Uh, so the question is I cannot paste it here because it's too long, but I will read it. Um, so this is my first conference about open source GIS. Uh, at work, we use proprietary GIS software. From the exposure at this conference, I have seen that there are lots of options, and in some cases, some solutions have. Specialized, specialized advantages, and I can tell that is that what easily works together. So the question is: Is there any kind of family tree of open source GIS developments that work together well, well, or are de derived from each other? Um, maybe I could intervene a little bit. Um, sure, go ahead. Uh, so at some point, uh, me and Vasile and um, a few of us had a small initiative that we are trying to uh, extend even more related to um, trying to um, map the open source for geospatial ecosystem. And now I'm looking for the, um, uh, for the link to that. Mm, this one. Um, so this is just um, paste it into the uh, into the chat. Um, here you go. So this started as uh, this started as an initiative when the company that I work for was part of the European Association of Companies for Remote Sensing, and they wanted to understand if the open source uh, solutions for geospatial, you know, represents uh, a mature um, and uh, valid uh, solution to the proprietary one. 
and um, the company and me and my colleague Asile, uh, we took this initiative on because we are part of the OSGEO community for some time now and we tried to to understand how this uh, and, you know and to make this comprehensive image of what uh, phosphor G is um, uh, but it was like uh, going down the rabbit hole because the connections and the solutions existing out there, they're, you know, the, the, um, the uh, um, world of it is really, is really big. Uh, the good thing is that we liked it so much that we continued after we presented the results to that, uh, to that association and we still gather uh, information uh, for different solutions that we find out from um, uh, from the conferences that we go to, I don't know, browsing uh, the web or whatever. The basic idea for this is that we want to extend it and we want to um, we want to open, uh, you know, to open this this collection of information f to the community to have some kind of curator, uh, someone who takes care of the um, of this graph or whatever visualization will be, uh, and. Um, you know to to collect the to collect the information it, at this point is pretty basic because we considered the type of solution that is there uh, i think uh, we considered five it was desktop uh desktop gis uh, mobile um uh, server side core libraries um and uh, what am i missing Anyway, you can you can see it you can see it uh, there, uh, the programming language, the license, and now we are working uh, together with OGC. We're starting this small uh, collaboration with OGC, and we're also um, considering on how to overlap this information with information related to which standards these solutions are uh, implementing or compliant with or however you'd like to to mention so maybe that would be a good start to see how big this ecosystem is but the idea is that we are trying to uh, to extend this initiative and open it to the community so it's not two three or four people just collecting this information but if you are are part of a project and uh, you consider that you know it has an open source license you have a github uh, repository or whatever then you can just introduce it there so um that's the that's the plan for uh, for future Th thanks godrina uh, so this is an impressive graph and it's interactive so people can actually uh, browse through the projects one by one but let's let's not scare away everybody who is new and this is a lot of, of uh, this is a, a big list of projects and and maybe something simpler for newcomers it would be to just go to the OSGO <laughs> website and 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 follow the wizard on how to choose a project and and go through the projects they are listed on the, on the website so the, the OSGO stack obviously has all these dependencies and all this. This uh, this is really a, an incredible work that you have done, Codrina, in, in that graph. Uh, but there are many many ways to to figure out what is working and what is working with what. And and uh, and I I think also the the OSG the new OSGO website has a, a good uh, a good uh, walkthrough on on the projects and and and. and somebody can follow and also we have the OSGO live project where we can uh, simply uh, for for somebody who is new to the community uh, one can one can go in OSGO live and and download the software and use it and and figure out the dependencies from the installers or figure out you know what is what is working with what so many many of the of the demos there um implicitly say you know if there's a, a web gis it might be working underneath with with a wms endpoint and and that could be one of the servers included in osgo live so it's not an easy answer uh, but, but you there we are trying to to give uh, hints in in the osgo 
um, uh, website and also on the, on the OSDO Live project. And, 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 and thanks for all the input. I, I'd probably add to that. Um, so yeah, very, very impressive uh, uh, work there to lay out the ecosystem. Sometimes we want to put building blocks together of components based on programming languages. Sometimes uh, these days with containers and everything, we have a little bit more abstraction. So you, you, there's a lot of choice for you to, to put these things together. And I'm just going to echo uh, Jody's comment on the chat in that we also have the, the standards which allow us to plug and play these things. So um, maybe maybe the programming languages have, have a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more abstraction with regards to using things through the standards, but it's uh, basically the facility to help us all interoperate. So um, keep that in mind as well, depending on where you are and how you're integrating things. Thank you. Yes, we, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I cannot keep track of all the chat uh, answers. <laughs> uh, so yeah, please, if you, if you see something that needs to be uh, mentioned here, please, please say that. So thanks, Tom. Yeah, standards are the way to make us all interoperate. And it's very important that that's why we are, it's one of our goals to, to, to promote the open standards and implement them. And if we go to the to the implementations to the reference implementations of OGC, the website, we will find so many OSGO projects there in, or, or open source projects in general. So it's it's really important, and this is this is why we are so close with with OGC, in, in, and we are trying to to also create a new MOU uh, with OGC that will will help us promote more our work. Um, through open standards as well. So let's let's move to another the next. thing. And I will also yeah. say this Please. this started from um, a question about proprietary GIS. I'll bet that that proprietary GIS also uses open source components. So you may want to focus on those open source components that your proprietary GIS uses and start getting into it that way as kind of a transition period uh, to move into more open source. And certainly working in the cloud is a is a really good way to deal with open source and your proprietary GS kind of together. So that's a, another transition option that you might have. Thank you, Mike. So moving to the next question, All right now. This is the most popular right now in the voting. What is the process for submitting, proposing a project? So, okay. That's the incubation committee. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So maybe so. we can invite Jordi to, to join and um, tell people about how it works. And we have a we on the website, we have a website which describes how the incubation works. So let me try here and find the committees and incubation committee is here. So basically uh, this is the web page for the, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen, right? Here we are. Mm -hmm. So this is a web page for the incubation committee. And, uh, and well, it's the committee that makes sure that we incubate new projects and that those projects graduate and, and, and make sure of the quality criteria. So there's a wiki page that describes how the, the incubation committee uh, works. Um, and there are there are obviously many many th this this page links to a, uh, to a, a list of other other pages on on how uh, what what qualifies what what makes a project qualify to be uh, to be incubated and and how it can be um, part of OSGO. Uh, so uh, unless we have Jody online, no. I mean. Uh, well, we have tried to lower the barrier of, of joining 
uh, for projects to join OSGO. So we have added recently the, the community uh, project uh, program where we are we are trying to list projects that are proven to be open source and follow a, a code of conduct and have a contributing uh, guide on on their on their source code so it's really easy to to add a, a community project to all this geo it's 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 not that difficult there are many there are issues that are we are working on as we as we speak there are open open discussions about you know what what is exactly an open source project uh, and how about what happens with platforms or uh, some open core stuff and we are hoping to get this sorted out uh, in in the next uh, in the next uh, few discussions that will happen but in 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 general the the of course the incubate the graduating a project is much more difficult it has to prove that it's uh, high quality that uh, we have to review the code uh, we have to make sure that it is supported by many organizations or, and has lots of users and uh, it complies with some more quality criteria there. Uh, but it, but the, the process of submitting is just, you know, sending an email to the incubation committee and say, hey, we have a project here and this is the project and just answer a few questions based on the wiki page and then the incubation committee will, will answer about your project and and how you can move forward then if if you are applying for incubation then you will be uh, assigned with a mentor who will uh, help you through the process any other uh, so let's move to another question okay any more comments here or should i move to the next question i just sent jody the link to join us in in streamyard so oh, not, jerry oh there jody. He is. hey jody hi you're so close just go back jody. To the... hey hi, jody. <laughs> you were so close just go back to the incubation committee page and yes i will go back saying exactly what you need to do the wiki's the internal behind the scenes wizard of oz experience and if you scroll down the page, there's a heading about how to join the website, because our mission is really to empower the world with open source, spatial. So if you're spatial and open source, let us help you. We can get into that, choose a project wizard, keep scrolling down, you can do it. How to list your project on the OSGEO website. What do you need to be? Geospatial, open source, and this is crucial, accepts contributions. So if you just, you know, are part of a small team or a small company and you don't want to play with others, OSGEO is not for you. Um, how to join the Geospatial Foundation. We've got a great community project initiative done by the board. It's got a few extra requirements. We actually want you to check that your code is open source first. That might take a little bit of time. And then finally, if you want to be a full-fledged OSGEO committee, you can scroll down a bit further. We can hook you up with a mentor from our community. You can go through an incubation process. And um, yeah, you can just be part of the core OSGEO projects team. That's all I got. Um, stop by the incubation committee. We're really happy to help. Any community members, the incubation committee is always recruiting. It's really nice hands-on, direct open source advocacy. Thank this you, Cody. And I think there's uh, another question that it might be interesting to, to, to you as well. <laughs> so the next question is, at the beginning, you mentioned you need more people. Could you please pr be precise in which part domain uh, or to do a specific task? So. Who wants to answer this one? I think I think that's part of this this collaboration that we answered before. It can be in whatever you feel is your best um, ability. Can be translations. Can be taking care of issues. Can be creating the blogs to help people. 
how to do things, uh, answering a stack exchange, being a volunteer on a FOS4G. Uh, I mean, just evaluate your own abilities and your own volunteer time and see where you can um, contribute. That is where we need you. And I guess all our committees that you see listed on the OSG website, they need more support. I can talk for the marketing committee, for example. We are a small group. And if you are interested in marketing, then you're really welcome to join us. I also think that um, I'll just throw it out there for all of us that I think any of the board members would probably be happy to chat with you directly about like, you know, what your skills are and your goals are and, and help you find a match if you're really um, overwhelmed by the options because there are a lot of ways that you can contribute. So feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of help direct or any, I think probably most members of the community would also be happy to, to discuss and probably point you in the direction of their favorite project. So uh, yeah, talk with everybody. Yeah, and I guess um, the you best way is to, to join us tomorrow. One. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you can just find any. Just pick any. It doesn't really matter which one. Just start. <laughs> Go ahead, Astrid. Yeah, I just wanted to mention again that we have tomorrow our code sprint and it's the best way to, to get in touch with people, to talk, um, yeah, face to face and uh, to find out with what may fit. So if you have time tomorrow, join us for the code sprint. All right, let's we have four minutes left. So I will move to the next question. Um, so the next question is, okay. Uh, could OSGO push and fund uh, cross-project development such as a rerun of the WMS suit out or ODC features API suit out? Sure, I can maybe uh, try to address part of that question. Um, it's interesting because at a, at a number of the presentations that, uh, that I was at this week, there were a lot of discussions around comparison of, uh, of servers. So um, I know that WMS shoot out has been, uh, has been put forth in previous events. Um, at, at, at the same time, we do have, uh, you know, evolving efforts with an OGC around the OGC APIs. As Angelos mentioned uh, previously, the uh, OSGO and the OGC are working together to upgrade, to update the memorandum of understanding. And I think that's going to benefit, um, uh, benefit OSGO as a whole, basically giving us an associate membership, which will allow an unlimited mem number of uh, members in the community to participate on behalf of OSGO. So saying, having said all that, shootouts, right? Um, I mean, there's lots of things to compare. I mean, there's a, a speed, there's compliance and so on and so forth. So I think I think it's a good time given given the, the progress of the MOU and where it's going, as well as an increased uh, collaboration between the groups. So we had the, uh, uh, the, the OSGO, OGC, Apache uh, sprint, um, a joint sprint early in the year. I think that produced positive results and a, and a good uh, participation from the community. Uh, we continue to see numerous OSGO projects at these OGC API sprints. So maybe at a future OSGO event, uh, we could work with OGC to um, to work together to make a, a, a shootout on you know performance and uh, and compliance and, and and things like that. So there's definitely uh, I'm seeing some interest with you know, with regards to some of the discussions we've had earlier in the week. And that's something we should probably uh, look into as, as we move forward with the new generation of OGC standards in OSGO software and FOSS4G software for that matter. Thank you, Tom. Any more comments on this one or something from the chat that we need to... mention else we should move to the next question uh okay this uh all right 
Are there resources with argument justification for convincing a private company or supported government agency to provide either direct sponsorship, uh, support or donate and encourage developer time as in-kind professional development? guess do you care about being hostage to a single company um, for the protection of your important data <laughs> you know it all depends on you know what you're trying to do and what your uh, company accomplishments accomplishes um, I have to say cloud adoption is probably one of the biggest arguments you can make for adopting open source because frankly you can't really scale very well um, with proprietary licensed software because you've got to start paying you know, per CPU, per license costs uh, to scale out in the cloud, whereas open source, you are going to be able to scale as much as you can uh, handle uh, in the cloud. So that's that's been a big adopter for many um, groups and government agencies um, transitioning to more open source. And, you know, once you start depending on open source, you really got to start presenting it to your company as this is this is your license cost this is your cost for actually doing business you're not paying a license fee anymore but you really got to count on your service providers the developers and stuff like that to get things done to account to get support when you have problems because with all software you're going to have issues you're going to have problems and this is just part of your license cost maybe it doesn't scale as much you know as your proprietary license but you shouldn't be marketing this as a way to eliminate all your costs. This is a way to scale your costs, to reduce them, but you should still be funding the software that you're using to get your business done. And that's kind of been my approach. And, you know, our government agency has been um, quite involved in funding a variety of open source projects that we depend on. And it's been a very um, fruitful collaboration effort over the years. I know, Tom, you're probably in a very similar situation to I am. You know, you're a government employee, but still working on open source projects and being funded for it. Yeah, definitely. We have uh, uh, we've had numerous collaborations with uh, funding core software. So it's really the uh, it's really a return on investment for us to you know put that um, you know put that funding into the core software, so the community benefits from it, as well as us benefiting benefiting from. Uh, uh, from from what the community provides, so uh, it's it, it's a it's a it's a paradigm shift, and it's uh, it's things that we have to do with our respective uh, uh, management and and so on to to uh, to move this you, you know to move that paradigm forward. So yeah, in a similar spot here, working out great so far. One thing that we've done is just kind of contracted with, you know, different companies that are open source companies and just presented it as, you know, just project costs to our accounting departments and stuff like that, rather than donations. We've gone through um, contracting companies and stuff like that that do open source in order to get our funding out that way, because we know that those companies are then funding the open source developers and the bug reports and other things like that, rather than oftentimes in a government agency, it can be difficult to do directly. Yeah, we, we, we do the same thing. Funding, obviously, features and bug, fix, bug fixes, which are which are relevant to, uh, to our requirements. But yeah. Uh, we, we also mentioned the cloud here and well, that will not be able we will not be able to cover the cloud issue in, in, in a few minutes that we have left or maybe we don't have left anymore. But I, I think the cloud is also a challenge for open source. I mean, if we depend on the cloud too much, there are parts of the cloud that are not open source and we don't know how they work. So it's it's also important to keep in mind as, as an open source organization that we have to depend on our own resources some, sometimes. So that's why SAC, the, the, the System Administration Committee is, is putting effort on keeping us uh, working and without depending to any outside cloud provider. But also the, the community has to realize that yes, they can the, the, the open source uh, flourishes in, 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 in the cloud, but we have to be very careful of, of what we depend on and and sometimes 
we don't know exactly where and, and what systems we are depending on and we have to keep that in mind and uh, when when selecting a technology and 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 working with that technology hybrid cloud then angelos <laughs> you know being able to use the same software in the cloud and on prem is one of the things that you can do with open source yeah. yeah, exactly. And, th and that's why, well, I, many, many organizations now use Kubernetes for, for deployment, and that is open source, obviously. So it's, it's important to know how to, to use your, the tools uh, by yourself sometimes, in my opinion. So any more comments or shall, shall we? We, I, I, we have a, a very uh, interesting question which I think it's very relevant. I had that in my in mind uh, at some point. So what is the most active preferred communication collaboration channel? Uh, sort of issue specific Git based communications that provides cross pollination of users and developers. And the OSGO community communications page seems quite fragmented Slack, email list, social, social media, IRC chat. I think this is highly relevant to to answer since it's not the IRC era anymore, I, I guess. Anybody wants well, to? Well, it can know? be IRC. There's a Libre chat um, IRC that we've transitioned to from, from Freenode. But yeah, it is quite fragmented. And you know this is kind of represents the diversity of open source or computing because there is no one best way if there was one best way we'd be proprietary i think also there's a lot of overlap like i can't imagine well someone might be on all of the platforms but i assume most of us are probably on you know maybe two or three of of the platforms and active users there and because there's overlap between all of these different communities um the message still is able to circulate. Um, I know I can get overwhelmed with trying to be a member of everything. So I've had to limit to <laughs> only a certain few things, but I think still the message gets across because there's people that are in multiple different communities and, and can contribute to the conversation that way. Also, I think that all the projects have the liberty to choose what is going to be the best way of communication. It depends a lot on the situation where you're living in, because some places the internet is very narrow, but we have lots of development happening there. So you cannot necessarily use a, a chat like this with the images and video and stuff. So I think that each project, each each um e everyone has the liberty to choose what is best for their success in osgo also i can see on on the chat that we are receiving feedback also from our system administration committee you know that there's matrix somebody can use matrix and bridge to several other messaging platforms uh just to bring up this this discussion any any more comments on on this i have to say the matrix works very well i use you know slack internally and i also use slack for accessing the uh, irc um, through matrix and that works very well for me And also point that we have a, our own matrix um, server, so somebody can log into matrix through their OSGO ID and uh, use matrix with their OSGO ID directly. All right, I think we are we already run out of time. Um, there are many more questions that are are it's not easy to uh, to cover in in one hour. Um, I would suggest that we will make a mail or gather all the questions and send the answers afterwards. 
Yes, this is. And maybe one thing we should mention that we will have the elections soon, and maybe you got to know people of our community during the conference or thought about other people who would like to join us as charter members. And that's the first step of the election that will come soon. So that would be an opportunity to um, join the community and act as OSGO advocate in the future. Yes, and we, we need more charter members and we need more people to step up and and and, and, and be, because after what that we will have also the board election. So yes, uh, I, I saw the, the the report from our from our CRO and I think we can all work to to improve the numbers of voting this year if possible. We are going to have our OSU board meeting on Sunday at 14 UTC, and you are invited to come to the meeting for continuing this discussion and answering all these questions and more. Actually, it is 13 action. UTC. <laughs> at 13 UTC, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the time zone issue is always uh, always here. <laughs> So, uh, all right, so with that, I think we should uh, close the session. And um, I would like to thank you all for, for joining the Q&A of the AGM. Um, let's see if, if, if that was, uh, if people are happy with this and maybe we, we can rethink the format of AGM next year since we already made a change this year, asking everybody to submit their video beforehand um i th i think it worked quite well uh this time because we managed to have the agm video shorter than last year uh and we we got lots of feedback um i would like to request people to send next time their 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 audio along with their video so it's important to hear the voices sometimes because we had some parts of the video without without any audio so uh that's that's something we can work on next year. Um, so, okay, thank you everybody for for attending this session, and uh, and see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>